Let's take a look at our passing options. So we have rocked our opponent from the strong side, gotten up to here. There's gonna be a battle looking for this underhook. This is, I uh, didn't have Gordon get this at the competition, but it's one of our best options because we're gonna be moving directly into a knee cut because our leg is already over top of our opponent's leg. What I'm looking at doing is controlling this leg as best as I can, posting on my head, building up, and from here, it's gonna be depending on what my opponent is doing. I am looking to take this arm and start winning this battle for inside space between his elbow and his hip. As I get this, I'm able to make a whole bunch of jumps in one, uh, one motion. What I'm looking at doing is starting to post his hand on the mat so that I have base to start driving myself this direction. My legs can't really do much for me right now because until I've taken this leg up and brought it here, I'm mostly stuck being able to drive and absorb force in this plane of motion. So from here, as I build up, my arm starts to shoot in close to his hip and my head's coming close right here immediately to his jaw. So like a Pez dispenser, those uh, candy machines, where I'm opening him up like this to break his posture and control the space. As soon as I get here and here, my underhook is grabbing around to his hip or to his ribs and closing. And I'm gonna be looking to generate base here to drive him back and start bringing my knee up and over top of his leg here. What I'm looking at doing is then bringing my head over to the cross shoulder. It's a choice at this point if you wanna use a cross face to pin your opponent. Once we get here, I'm able to use an underhook and head position on this side or a cross face and an underhook. Usually what ends up happening is if my opponent doesn't block the cross face, I prefer to go here. And if he is blocking the cross face, I'm gonna use my head to replace that. So I can box his shoulders to have rotational control of his body as well as breaking his posture. Here as I rock up, I immediately shoot deep so that I can now bring my head in. My knee hasn't even gotten over top of his legs yet, but because of how I was able to win the upper body battle and start to establish chest to chest connection, I can now at this point start to free him up and bring my leg over. If he's gonna be trying to hook this leg here, instead of trying to kick out wide, we're just gonna bring it up higher and start leading with that knee here. So here, it's not a battle that he can really win. If he's really still able to cause some issues here, then we just gotta make sure we're increasing rotational control to the side, breaking his posture, turning him to the left. And then I'm gonna start migrating my hips out more to his right. And so I'm basically making him do this reclined twist so that now I can bring my leg over top. And now I don't even have to really complete the knee cut. From here, whether it's my knee that comes to his hip, my hip to his hip, creating a wall so that his legs aren't able to come back into play and have him reestablish frames and get his guard back. This is the best way of passing from here. So as I'm here and I start rocking up, especially depending on how he's based. If he's based with both his hands on the mat, he's not framing me right now. And so it's gonna be a play of, as soon as I start rocking up, I might shoot immediately from here. I just wanna be in control of my center of gravity so I'm not leaning like this and getting rocked back. However, I still have control of his legs, so it's not the end of the world, but if he's grabbing my head from here and breaking me down, it's gonna make life a bit more of a pain in the ass. So here, as I rock up, here, I'm not even controlling his legs so much at this point. I have my elbow braced against the top of his ankle, tight to his legs, so that it's buried here in my hip. So it's gonna take a second for him to pull his leg out, not as long, but I have really good base now that as he's pulling this leg out, I don't care. I won the head position and I won the inside space. And so now I'm looking to flatten them out, pin to that cross shoulder, bring it out here, control, slide my knee down to finish and complete the pass. Gordon was looking for that underhook, but got shut down. So he just moved into the float. As we're moving into that float position, king's core as I like to call it, as I'm here and I've rocked up, if I'm starting to hit frames here, this is when Gordon starts to use that float position because he's unable to get chest to chest connection to control the upper body. So as I'm here and Kevin starts framing me, 
building up and bringing my knee to the other side. And then from here, I'm able to start moving into the float position. From here, as I rock, I start trying to shoot. From here, what I need to do is I need to kind of bring my knee over to this side to start redirecting his hips so I can step over. I can also, from here, take my hand and control his knee so that as I start to move myself over, I need my right hand for base so that he can't just reverse me. And as he starts to follow, I'm able to now move his knees off to the side. You may be able to jump straight into like a three quarter mount like this, but most likely we're gonna end up here. And then obviously at that point, we're now starting to look at ways that we can use the float pass. So try and win that underhook battle as fast as you can. And sometimes you can do so as we're building up because as we're starting to move from that 411 position and performing that technical standup, we may have the opportunity to streamline this pass and just jump multiple steps. However, if your opponent is in very good base and is using the uh, frames to effectively manage the distance, you might have to move a little bit slower from here and you might not even be able to actually win that upper body battle.